What's good guys? So in this video, we're going to be going over uh, blade ball mechanics, how we're going to make the movement system for bl how blade ball works. Um, now I've been experimenting with a few different methods to do this, and we're going to be going over the one that I think is uh, the best in terms of performance and having um, uh, the most amount of control over the ball and like how the ball moves and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a ball real quick. Okay, so we have a ball right here. Um, little test, little ball we're gonna use for testing. Um, I guess we could put like a highlight in it to give it some character. Now you have like a little highlight ball or whatever. Um, cool, so we have this little like ball all right, so now we're gonna create a local script. And we are doing all this on the client. Um, I'm gonna show you like the actual movement of the ball and the ball itself, like, you know, going towards the player and stuff. We're gonna be doing all of that on the client, okay? So we could actually take this and put it in replicated storage, but let's go ahead and get a uh, replicated storage. Then we can get our ball. And then we're going to uh, get run service as well. And then we're going to connect to a stepped event. And we'll do time. And then we'll do step because that's what you get in step event. We're not going to use time for this. We're just going to use step, which is also known as delta time. And we need to set up a few variables. So we'll go for a speed of 10 right now. <clears throat> and then we're going to have a current target, but that's going to equal nil right now. And we're going to just do something kind of real quick to set up a current target. So now we're going to get players. And now we need to get the player's character. So character. So this is going to be our target. It's going to be the humanoid root part of the character. And so down here, um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a lerp <clears throat> for this. A lerp function. And so we'll have position 0, and then position 1, and then T. All right, so this is the equation the lerp equation that we're going to use to determine where our part is going to be in between the two targets which is position zero and position one so you take position zero plus brackets position one minus position zero and then you times that by t um so t is always T is always a 
number value between zero and one. That's what T is. One would be the target position, which is part, which is a uh, point one, and then zero would be the starting position, which is point zero. So T is what we're using to determine how far along our ball or part, our moving part, is going to be in between these two points. So what we're going to do is down here, we're going to say new position, or we could just do ball dot position. First off, we're going to say if not current target, then return. But we're going to do ball dot position equals lerp. And we'll have a starting position as well. So we'll actually use um, We'll actually do that and then we'll say if not start position then uh, start position equals ball dot position. So this is where the ball is going to start off at. This is going to be our starting position. So our starting position is never going to change. It's just going to get the original position of where the ball was placed. We're just going to use that for this example to get our point one. This is going to be point one basically. So we'll do start position. And then we'll do um, current target dot position. And then we'll do T and then T up here, we're going to say local T equals zero. And then down here below the ball dot position, we're going to say T plus equals step divided by speed. And then we'll have here, if t is greater or equal to 1, then t equals 1. All right. So this should be working. Let's go ahead and test it. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Well, I don't know where our ball went. Oh, we didn't clone it. We didn't even get our ball. All right. Um, we'll have ball template. Or we'll just do ball. We'll just do ball.parent equals workspace. All right. There we go. And see, now you can see our ball is moving towards us. It's following us pretty good. So yeah, and that's pretty much it for the ball movement. Obviously, it's going to change, you're going to tweak some of this stuff, or if you're going to if you're going to want to add curves, from this method, adding curves is quite simple, we're just we would just be adding a few more lerps between middle points. And then we would lerp those like middle points. Um, it's just like lerping lerps. It's that's pretty much how that would work uh, for curves. But we're not going to go over that in this video. Um, what I will go over though is because this is on the client, we want something to uh, detect that a player has been hit. And we also want to make it to where it's not exploitable so that players see that, oh, I can just remove my hit detection because it's on the client. So this is what we're going to do for that. Um, we're going to create a, a remote event here. And then we'll just copy over... I don't need all these, but we're just gonna copy these over just to get replicated storage. So local event equals replicated storage dot remote event. And then we'll have event dot on server events connect function. And then we're going to 
connect. Um, this function. What am I doing right now? Okay, that's not it. All right, we're going to. We get the player, but what else do we need to pass in? I'm not sure that we need to pass in anything, so I don't think we do. So we'll have a hits registered table here. And then we'll have if table.find hits registered player, then return. And then we'll have table.insert hits registered player. And then if hits registered, uh, if hashtag hits registered is greater or equal to 50% uh, of players get players, then prints uh kill player so this way what's happening right now and then we'll also do uh table dot clear uh it's registered okay so also so what's happening right now we have on every single client this event okay we also need to hook it up here and i'll do that um right now i guess Oh, we also need to do a detection as well. So what I'll do is I'll set up the detection. I'll do that in a second, but I'll explain this real quick. So what we're doing though, is anytime a player gets hit by the moving part, every single client that isn't exploiting is going to shoot to the server saying, hey, we've detected a hit. The server is going to pick that up. And if there is, if there is at least 50% of players that have registered a hit in the server, they're going to go ahead and kill that player. So this way, there's no chance of exploiting. The only way to exploit this would be if 50% or more of players were exploiting. And that's not really ever the case. So, yeah, um, I actually like this method a lot, to be honest. I think it's, uh, I think it's really good, really good method. I can't think of any potential issues. Now I wonder, some issues that I wonder about is the part, um, some issues I wonder about is the, uh, I just lost train of thought is like the moving parts always on the client. And so sometimes that maybe could get messed up, but I don't really see, I don't, I don't as, as of now, I haven't had an issue and I don't know if that's gonna be an issue, but it's something I'll have to test out in the future. But that's just something that I'm kind of curious about if, that, if, that, if there's anything that could go wrong and if maybe there would be something that we would need to do eventually, like add in a check of like positioning for the part to make sure it's on track. Um, but I'm, I'm not too sure. So yeah, distance between targets. We're doing a basic distance check to see if the part has hit the player. So distance between targets, um, we'll do uh, current target dot position minus start position dot magnitude. And then we'll do um, distance between ball uh, and then we'll have uh, ball dot position minus start position dot magnitude and then we'll have 50 or we'll have like for this video we'll do 80 percent 
of the distance and then we'll do so 0 0.0 or 0.8 times distance between targets and then we'll say if distance between ball is greater or equal to 80 percent then event fire server all right so we'll do that so this should work let's go ahead and test this out Boom, kill player. So it's detecting a hit constantly, so it did work. And this is the server that's picking that up because our server script, kill player. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. This is how I'm doing the ball system um, right now uh, for this game. <clears throat> and I mean, I think, it, I think it works fairly well. Like it's kind of clean, so. And then there's curves that it can do. Depending on where the player looks. Well, that wasn't a curve. But yeah, so it looks really clean, looks smooth, looks cool. Um, am I missing something? I don't think I am. Yeah, this is really just the simple movement system. The only thing that I have uh, noticed for the way this is, is it's, and it's not, uh, quite. So the ball is really quick to follow you on the Y. And if you've noticed in other games, blade ball games, I think some of them might have that, but there are, there's like one that I know, I'm pretty sure it's blade ball and then anime ball as well. It's not that quick to follow you on the Y. There's a slight delay and I've got it to do that, but the math is completely different than what I'm, the current math that this is right now. So it's really just a matter of how you're getting the position, what your math is, because you could change the math slightly and it will be a different um, sort of, uh, mechanic i guess or a different um style so keep that in mind and we're getting we're getting that lag because we're printing this every every uh every step um but yeah the server's printing that every step um so it's nothing with the the ball system the lag is so yeah that's pretty much it though guys uh, I will see you on the next one. I might go over curves on the next one.